Hello and welcome to a Scratch tutorial on Magic Squares. What do people understand when they talk about Magic Squares? Let's start with the simplest example. A 3x3 three three square can be filled with integers from 1 to 9. Now the sum of integers can be calculated for each row. In the first row one finds 6, in the second row 15 and in the last row the numbers add up to 24. Similarly, the sum can be calculated for each column. In the first column one finds 12, in the second 15 and in the last 18. Finally, the sum can be calculated along each diagonal. In this example, 15 is found in either cases. Now one can naturally ask, is it possible to rearrange the numbers in the square in such a way that all sums are equal to each other? It turns out that such a rearrangement exists and the sum in each row, column and diagonal is 15. In what follows, Scratch will be used to explore two algorithms to find such arrangements of numbers that form magic squares. In a random approach, the numbers in the square are randomly shuffled. After each change, it is checked whether the new square is magic or not. This is very easy to implement. It nicely works for the 3x3 three three magic square, but we will see that it is unlikely to find a solution in this way for a 4x4 four four square. In the second algorithm the numbers are filled in systematically. With this algorithm it will be possible to find solutions for the 4x4 four four square. There is a nice challenge waiting for you where you are asked to change the algorithm to find perfect magic squares. Finally there are a lot of strategies that allow to create magic squares of any size. One of them will be shown in the end. This should not conceal the fact that lots is unknown about magic squares and it is a difficult task to tell how many of such magic squares exist. If you don't want to spend a lot of time thinking how the numbers can be arranged to find magic squares, you might start by guessing and checking. Similarly, one can use a computer program to check random configurations of numbers. In total, there are 3.6 million ways to distribute 9 different numbers in a 3x3 three three square. For the first subsquare, you have 9 choices. Once this choice is made, there are 8 choices left for the second subsquare and so on. It turns out that there are only 8 configurations that are magic. In fact, some people would say there is only one up to rotations and reflections. It follows that the odds for finding a magic configuration randomly are 1 in 45,000. Nevertheless, such an arrangement is easy to find with a computer. First the numbers are randomly distributed, then a random pair of numbers is interchanged and all the sums are recalculated. This is repeated until a magic configuration is found. If you haven't used Scratch before, have a look at the shown link for more details on how to start. Here a new project is started. First the background is created that shows the 9 subsquares. You can scale the subsquare until it has the same width and height. The small square is copied and shifted twice to obtain the first row. This row is copied and shifted twice again to create the full square. The numbers for each little square will be stored inside the variables as 1, 2, as 9. They are created and the display of the variables is adjusted to align nicely with the background. The solution is stored inside a list. A list is a neat container. It is possible to add numbers to a list, to replace numbers and to iterate through all numbers inside a list automatically. This will be shown and explained in this tutorial. When the program is started with the green flag, it is good practice to first delete everything that is in the list from the previous runs. Of course now it is empty because there hasn't been a previous run yet. Next the numbers from 1 to 9 should be added to the solution list. This can be achieved with a loop control that is repeated 9 times. Additionally one needs an auxiliary variable usually denoted with i. This variable is initially set to 1. Inside the loop i is added to the list and then its value is increased by 1. Therefore during the next repetition the successor of 1 is added to the list. A click onto the green flag shows that the list is populated with the numbers from 1 to 9. Now the solution should be shown inside the square. Therefore a new block is created and called show solution. 
Inside the block, the numbers in the solution list are assigned to the variables S1 to S9. A second block modifies the solution by swapping two numbers at two positions A and B. To swap two numbers in a list, one needs a little trick. It's worth memorizing, since it will be used quite often. One first has to store the value at the position A of the list in a separate variable. Here it is called TMP for temporary. Once the value at the position A is stored, one can replace the value at the position A with the value at the position B. And finally the value at the position B is replaced with the value stored in the temporary variable. The next block is tested with the event that is controlled by the space key. Whenever the space key is pressed, the solution interchanges two values at random position and a new solution is shown. A last block is needed where we check whether the list actually contains a magic solution. Additionally, one further variable is created that indicates whether a solution has been found. This variable is called found, initially it is set to zero and once a solution is found it will be set to one. Inside the test block each row and column and the two diagonals have to be tested. We need an if statement for each test. First value of the subsquares in the first row are added and compared to the magic number 15. This is repeated for the second and third row. Be careful, each new if statement has to be placed inside the previous one, that one only reaches the inside of the last if statement when all other if statements have been fulfilled as well. Inside the last if statement the variable found is set to 1. We try to use the space key but it doesn't look like that the solution is found after a short while. Let's use one more loop that is repeated until a solution has been found. Then indeed, after a short while, one of the eight solutions emerges out of the random chaos. It is instructive to see how many attempts were needed to find the solution. Therefore we count the number of loops with a variable counter. This is set to zero at the start and increased by one during the loop. We see that we need about 50,000 attempts on average. Is it possible to extend this program to a 4x4 square? There are 21 trillion possibilities to arrange 16 different numbers inside the square. There are only 7040 magic configurations. The odds are 1 in 3 billion to find a magic configuration. A short test shows that no solution has been found even after 2 million trials. So a lot of patience or quite a bit of luck is needed to actually find a solution in this way. This calls for the second algorithm. It is a so-called backtracking algorithm. All numbers are used systematically. It is important that all sums are checked as soon as it is possible. Once the first row is filled with numbers, the first sum is evaluated. It is obviously not satisfied. Consequently, the last and the next to last numbers are increased until the sum is 34. The numbers are increased similar to the way we count, but it is taken care that no number is used twice. Once the sum in the first row is satisfied, the next four numbers are filled in and the procedure repeats for the second row and the third row. As soon as the first number in the last row is added, there are two further sums that can be calculated. The sum in the diagonal and the sum in the first column. The sum in the diagonal is much larger than 34. Therefore the current setup cannot lead to a magic square. One has to trace back where the first changes can be made. This is usually in the row above. Only when there is no further change possible in the third row, the second row is changed. This is repeated over and over again and eventually the second and third number in the diagonal is diminished and finally a full solution to the magic square is found. For a successful implementation of this algorithm, we consider all numbers in the magic square like one big number with digits ranging from 1 to 16. There are three operations that need to be performed with these numbers. It must be possible to reduce the number of digits from the right. Secondly, we need to increment the digits as if we were counting upwards. However, there is no doubling of digits allowed. And finally, once the sum is fulfilled in one row, we need to append additional digits to the number. Now it is time to go back to scratch, where the background square has already been prepared and the variables for each little square are used similarly to the 3x3 case. 
The first new feature is a pool where all numbers are contained. The numbers are always taken from the pool to make sure that every number is used at most once. At the start the pool is populated with the numbers from 1 to 16. And the auxiliary variable i is used again to count up to 16 with a repeat loop. Some adjustments are made that there are the correct numbers in the pool. Now three blocks are created, one for incrementing, one for shrinking and one for expanding. The block for shrinking is equipped with an additional parameter length that controls the length which the number is shrunk to. We start with the increment block. First one deals with the situation when there is no number in the square. Simply the first number of the pool is added to the solution list. Moreover, the first number in the pool is replaced with a zero to indicate that it has been used and it is not available any longer. The right arrow key event is used for testing. It works when the right arrow key is pressed and one is added to the first subsquare of the magic square. When there are numbers in the square, we take the last one, put it back into the pool and remove it from the square. Then we increase i by 1 and get the next larger number from the pool and add it to the solution. We test it and observe that it correctly sets the value in the pool to 0. An if condition makes sure that no number larger than 16 can be added. Now it works nicely. Moreover, once 16 is reached and the increment block is called again, the 16 will be removed since only the first part of the block is executed. It would be nice if an additional digit was added in this case and the 16 was set back to 1. Therefore the if statement is extended by an else statement where the expand block is called that we will take care of next. The first part of the expand block is the same as for the increment block. So it is simply duplicated. Now the next available number in the pool has to be found. One has to go through the pool list and the first number different from zero should be added. An additional variable success is created. It is set to one once a number has been found, otherwise it will be zero. This variable controls how often the repeat loop is used to go through the pool list. The variable i is used again to step through the list. If the number in the pool at the position i is greater than 0, success is set to 1, the number is taken from the pool and added to the square. It does not expand the solution yet, since the last number was removed before the expansion. This can be improved if the block increment is called before the expansion. Now it works better. However, now the problem occurs that numbers are used twice or even more often. The reason for this is easy to understand. There is no check whether the number is available in the increment block when the number is increased. We did a similar check in the expand block and we can just copy it from there. Now the loop is repeated until a larger number is found successfully or i is larger than 15. If there was no success the expansion is added again. Now it works as expected. No doubling occurs and it's cool to see how it jumps from 1615 to 123. The last block is rather easy constructed. We can use the part where a digit is removed and repeat this until the required length is reached. We add events for the up key and the down key where each of the blocks can be tested separately. Now it is time to use these blocks to find solutions. A variable called found solution is used to control a loop that will run until a solution has been found. A new block is created that tests an arrangement of numbers whether it satisfies necessary conditions. It only needs to start testing when at least four numbers are filled into the first four subsquares. Otherwise it simply adds new numbers. A second if condition checks whether the numbers of the first row add up to the magic number. If this is not the case, the increment function simply counts one step further. As long as no solution has been found, this is repeated over and over again. 
For testing purposes, we set found solution equal to 1 when the first row adds up to 34. And indeed, the program works as expected. It stops once the first four numbers add up to 34. To find further solutions for the first row, we use the space key event and add the loop to the space key event. Additionally, found solution is set to 0 and another increment is performed. Now, once the space key is pressed, more solutions for the first row are generated. This strategy is now repeated for the second and the third row. It is tested after each step and it works quite nicely. In the fourth row, new things have to be considered. As soon as the first number is added, there are two more conditions that have to be satisfied. The first column sum and one of the diagonals can be calculated. The diagonal corresponds to the 4th, 7th, 9th and 13th little square. The two conditions are imposed simultaneously with the help of an AND operation. The first column is given by the 1st, 5th, 9th and 13th square. Then the constraints from the second column and third column are imposed and finally combined with two more AND operators the condition for the fourth row, fourth column and for the second diagonal are implemented. When the program is started it makes very slow progress. This is because once a 13 digit number is reached the counting is very slow and one can see in the second row that the numbers do not add to 34 any longer. This can be improved when the solution is always shrunk to the number of digits where the first condition is not satisfied anymore. Then the progress is much faster and after a while the first solution is actually found. In principle all 7040 magic square configurations can be found this way, but always 8 of them are equal up to rotations and reflections. This gives 880 different 4x4 magic squares. A file with a list of all these squares is linked to the video description. Now here are the challenges for you. The first one is rather simple. Just modify the program in such a way that the next magic square is calculated once the space key is pressed and so on. For the second challenge you are asked to impose more constraints in order to find perfect magic squares. Perfect magic squares do not only have the same sum in all rows, columns and diagonals, but also in any 2 by 2 subsquare. One solution is shown here. What is the first solution that the backtracking algorithm will find? Write your solution into the comments. In fact, this class of perfect magic squares has a larger group of symmetries. Now rows and columns can be interchanged arbitrarily without destroying the property of being perfectly magic. As a consequence, all perfect magic 4x4 squares are actually the same up to rotations, reflections or interchanges of rows and columns. There is one magic 3x3 square. There are 880 magic 4x4 squares. There are 275,305,224 5x5 squares. It is unknown how many 6x6 squares exist and also for larger magic squares the total number of possible solutions is unknown. However, there are techniques that allow to construct magic squares of any size. One technique is shown that works for all squares with odd numbers of rows and columns. I first came across this method when I was 13, roughly at the same time when the World Wide Web came into existence. This image shows the cover of a student magazine that displays a 17 by 17 square and the reader is supposed to complete it. The given numbers indicate that there should be a very generic procedure and the entries do not look random by any means at all. To complete the square, one can extend the square by 17 rows and columns in each direction. Then all numbers are written down diagonally, starting from the middle of the top row. Numbers inside the square are already at the right position. All numbers outside of the square have to be shifted by 17 steps into the inside of the square. This is tedious to do by hand, but for me it was very exciting and I tried even larger ones by hand. There are other techniques for even squares. It is not difficult to find magic squares after all, but it is not known how many of these squares exist. Certainly this one is just one of incredibly many other 17 by 17 magic squares. 
There are things to explore and questions to be answered even for such seemingly simple mathematical objects like magic squares. I hope you'll have fun and stay tuned for the next challenge. Bye bye.